Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Tonight on Our News, March has made crime history as the deadliest month ever. The national security minister still under fire for remarks made. Now the PM responds to calls for him to resign. And the governor general airlifted to New Providence after getting ill on a family island. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, one man is in custody and the firearm police believe was used in the country's latest murder on Andros Avenue has been removed from the streets. The broad daylight shooting taking place just hours after the prime minister released new crime fighting tactics at the weekly office of the prime minister press briefing. Our Sasha Lightborn was on the scene. Police were already in the area of Andrus Avenue when the country's latest homicide took place. Deputy Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernander believes that helped police to get a head start on the investigation. Reports are shortly after 2 p.m., a man believed to be in his late 20s or early 30s was sitting on a porch on Ragged Island Street when a small gray vehicle pulled up. A lone gunman exit approached the young man on the porch and fired several shots. Uh, he was hit uh, to the body. He was later taken to hospital by private vehicle. And we just got a call a short time ago that he succumbed as a result of the injuries. Just this morning, the Prime Minister announced new crime fighting initiatives to assist with the high level of crime in the country. One of those initiatives saturated police patrols in hot spot areas. And that particular initiative put into action today as an arrest was made. Deputy Commissioner Fernander says police were looking for the alleged suspect in his late 20s for the past month for attempted murder. Officers was right in the immediate area, saw the vehicle speeding away. There was a chase onto Wolf Road and then ended up at the rear of this residence here uh, into right lane at the dead end. The individual exit and ran into this residence followed by officers where he was arrested and a firearm uh, recovered. Either you will catch the individuals in the ark or you will catch them leaving the scene. The only two things can happen. If you don't move away from the life of crime, either you will make prison or you will die. Now, Deputy Commissioner Fernandez says you can expect to continue to see high saturation of police in hotspot areas. This latest incident brings the total number of homicides to 44 for the year. Reporting for our news, I'm Sasha Lightborn. Thanks, Sasha. Well, there were 22 murders in the month of March, making one of the most deadly months in Bahamian history. Jared Higgs tells us more. Fernander made the revelation while he appeared at this week's OPM press briefing. In the month of March, we recorded a total of 22 murders. I think that is one of the highest months ever in the history. Fernanda says many of the murders are connected. The victim on Mother Pratt Park was an associate of victims of a murder that occurred a couple of weeks ago. The victim in Hollywood subdivision was also an affiliate of a man who was murdered recently. But police are unsure whether he was the intended target since he was driving a vehicle that belonged to somebody else. Commissioner Paul Rowe says police also believe that the Sutton Street victim on Tuesday night was not the intended target of the killing. The father was killed. We don't believe that he was the target. We believe the target was somebody else. And we are going to be working with that family to make sure that the people don't go back and try and deal with the individual that they wanted. Police say they try to intervene in disputes, but it's challenging. Fernanda told the story of a recent murder victim who police brought in for questioning shortly after a previous attempt was made on his life. The man wouldn't talk to police and was killed days after he was released. He went to a particular church right after he was released from us and asked the members there and the pastor, say, please pray for me. They trying to kill me. And even then, he didn't even open up to say, well, this John Brown or this the reason they tried to get him to open up to the police and he refused. Days later, he was a dead man. Reporting for our news, 
I'm Jared Higgs. Amid a drastic increase in murders and other criminal activities, Prime Minister Philip Davis announcing a number of measures being implemented to combat criminal activity. Topping that list, putting more boots on the ground. We will increase police presence in hotspots with saturation patrols for as long as they are necessary. Our communities need more manpower and more resources. The Royal Bahamas Police Force is creating a specialized task force focused on decreasing gang-related crimes and apprehending those involved in firearms trafficking. As Police Commissioner Paul Roll revealed that the RBPF is short some 900 officers, the Prime Minister says recruitment exercises are ongoing. He also says the RBPF will expand and improve the use of technology like CCTV and drones. Davis outlined the plan to strengthen urban renewal and community policing in reaching at-risk youth. His comments come as the country recorded 44 murders for the year. In the next few days, I intend to constitute the National Security Council, which will support increased sharing of intelligence across agencies, allowing us to confront our security challenges jointly and with the best information possible. And because criminal activities are not contained by borders, we intend to strengthen our collaboration with international partners as well. Meanwhile, police are probing not one, but two daring early morning break-ins at a local bank. The crime was caught on camera, and the video showing two suspects entering Commonwealth Bank's Prince Charles branch has gone viral. Deputy Police Commissioner Clayton Fernander says police are determined to identify the suspects. Jasmine Brown reports. The Deputy Commissioner of Police releasing a few details about that break-in as he says while the video did go viral this morning, the incident was not a recent one. It's a break-in report and that matter would have happened uh, a few weeks back. It was a break-in at that time. Uh, while the incident was never reported in the Royal Bahamas Police Force's daily crime report, our news understands the first break-in at the branch occurred in December, while the latest break-in occurred just last month. Both incidents were caught on the bank's security cameras and the footage has since gone viral. In the March 2022 recording, two men could be seen using a ladder to gain access to the Eastern New Providence Bank branch. In another video from the December break-in, two masked men are seen entering the bank from the front of the building using not the front door, but a decorative glass wall. And in a third video, the men could be seen using high-powered tools to try to gain access to a safe. Nobody is in custody. As you can see the video, everybody is masked up, uh, gloves up, and we continue to prove that to to see if we can identify who the individuals are. Given the fact that police are no closer to identifying the suspects, Deputy Commissioner Fernandez says they need the public's help. If anybody with any information, I'll be pleading to members of the public with any information to please uh, reach, out, reach out to us. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. In other news, Governor General Cornelius A. Smith is under observation at Doctors Hospital after being airlifted from Eleuthera today, according to Press Secretary Clint Watson. Watson says doctors say it appears the Governor General may have experienced heat exhaustion when he reported feeling ill during an official ceremony. According to Watson, the Governor General, according to Secretary to the Governor General Jack Thompson, the GG and his staff were attending a ceremony at the P.A. Gibson Primary School in North Eleuthera. When they went outside to take photos following that event, Smith said he wasn't feeling well. Earlier today, Watson gave this update. As a result, he was taken to the clinic in Eleuthera, where he's being observed now as they await the arrival of our aircraft to return him to the capital uh, for further observation. We understand that he is conscious. Around 2 p.m. this afternoon, the aircraft carrying the Governor General landed at Odyssey Airport. He was said to be awake and aware the entire time. Today is also the Governor General's 85th birthday. Well, the evening's beginning to cool off. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with the latest. Good evening, Greg. Good evening, Christina, and uh, hello, everybody. Uh, first look at weather tonight. We take a look at current conditions outside our studios. A warm evening once again with temperatures in the low 80s. Clear skies. The winds are still a little breezy out there out of the south at 14 miles per hour, and you feel like temperature. <laughs> 
very warm 85 degrees. Satellite view, nothing happening across us, but we are watching a frontal boundary now taking shape across central Florida, slowly sagging towards the south. Should get into the Northwest Bahamas late tonight and into early tomorrow morning. Grand Bahama, Abaco, and you guys, you should see some shower activity after midnight. And then here in the capital, we expect that frontal boundary to be passing through us sometime after midday. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Thanks, Greg. Still to come on our news, the PM is negotiating a 38% decrease in the cost of shipping. Social services reporting child abandonment is on the rise. Plus, the Prime Minister responds to calls for his national security minister to resign. That's coming up when our news returns. May be some relief to rising shipping prices as Prime Minister Philip Davis says he's negotiated up to a 38% discount on the cost of shipping containers coming into the country from the Far East. His comments come as residents are feeling the pinch of rising prices. He says the government is still waiting on a discount for those coming from Florida. I've engaged with several of our of our ship airlines, ship shipping agencies, and I've been, a, I've been able to work out an arrangement with one of them that, will be, that has already agreed and has already put in effect um, re the reduction of the cost of containers coming into the country. We have negotiated up to a, a 38 percent uh, discount on containers coming to the Bahamas. The Prime Minister also addressing the controversy surrounding National Security Minister Wayne Monroe's comments over a four-year plea deal for a 40-year-old man who was accused of having sexual intercourse with a 14-year-old girl. Davis says Monroe needs to learn to keep his personal comments to himself. Berthony McDermott has that. Amid calls for National Security Minister Wayne Monroe to submit his letter of resignation, Prime Minister Philip Davis telling reporters today he doesn't think a resignation is warranted. He did, however, say that Monroe needs to learn to keep his personal comments to himself. I don't know that what he has done amounts to that. He has already expressed his regrets um, in my conversations with him. And if you follow what he had to say, it appears to be more of his personal view. And he has to come to learn as a young politician that is it when he holds a post as he does, his personal views may be best kept with himself and personal. Last week, Monroe said the four-year sentence imposed on a 40-year-old man who impregnated a 14-year-old schoolgirl was too severe. The Prime Minister also making it clear that grown men who commit similar crimes should get lengthy sentences. Grown men should stay away from children and should be punished to the fullest extent of our laws when they do not. The sentences should punish the wrongdoing and be lengthy enough to deter others from committing the same crimes. Davis said he was disturbed about the many cases where women and children were targeted. His comments come as the conversation on gender-based violence has been thrust at the forefront of national discussions. Davis said he's tasked Attorney General Ryan Pinder to look into strengthening penalties in this regard. The existing penalties may not be severe enough. I've asked my Attorney General to lead a comprehensive overview and advise my Cabinet of the steps we can take to make these stronger. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. Meanwhile, child abandonment is on the rise in the country, according to Minister of Social Services, Obi Wilshkom, who says he believes fixing the economy could be a key solution. Here's Megan Shepard. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and ensuing economic hardship are said to be some of the main causes of a rise in child abandonment in the country. Social Services and Urban Development Minister Obi Wolshkom says the sad reality is that children are being left behind and more children are becoming wards of the state. We do expect it. We do expect the numbers to increase even at Simpson Penn. 
uh, as opposed to Willamay Pratt. I was being briefed yesterday. Um, it's all related. It's all related to uh, the social uh, dilemma that we find ourselves in. I think it's a multi-tiered approach. Uh, we have to ensure that our economy continues to grow. We have to get more women working. We have to get more men involved and more responsibility. Uh, the cases of abuse, particularly sexual abuse, is just unacceptable. Uh, no country should accept it, and we don't. Minister Wilscombe says the numbers are even higher on Grant Bahama. That is, of course, telling you that what's happening, people are running away from responsibilities simply because where do I turn? What do I do? And it's a question. Well, we have to answer that question. And I think it's economy related. Uh, the Grand Bahama economy has been on the terrible slide. And we talk about COVID and we talk about uh, the uh, Dorian. But the truth is, this has been happening since uh, Hurricane Francis, Jean, Wilma from 2004. That economy has not regained its strength. He adds that his ministry has developed an aggressive public relations approach to raise awareness among parents and the wider community. So public relations, greater communication, the stories, the truth, the facts must be told to the Bahamian people and we need more people joining in the crusade to end what's happening in our country. It's totally unacceptable. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. When our news comes back from the break, the Minister of Sports calls out a coach for fat shaming an athlete. And our Marcellus Hall is up with the latest in sports. The details when our news returns. This is our news. Welcome back. Now, the Minister of Social Services, O.B. Wilshkum, is also responding to claims made by a 14-year-old tennis player, Rachel Thompson. Thompson says during an international tennis tournament, she felt judged by her coach regarding her weight, which also made her feel discouraged and question her love of the sport. Simply put, the minister says that is unacceptable. Bullying is unacceptable. If the coach is doing it, then what should others do? Coaches are to set examples. Uh, no one's too fat to play anything. No one's too uh, big. Uh, in fact, we should be encouraging. Why say that to someone? He should be penalized and he should be thrown from the team. Should not be on the team. I played on basketball teams, football teams, uh, softball teams. We had big people playing. I found coaches to inspire, to uh, ensure that you use your skill set. What is your skill set? What can you do uh, as a part of the team? Teams work together. Uh, the coach should be, uh, if he did it, if he's in fact guilty of what she claims, then he ought to be let off the team. And as the country prepares to send a delegation to the 2022 Carifta Games, the minister emphasizes the role of a coach is to encourage and uplift athletes. We're getting ready to send our uh, Carifta teams away. We're encouraging them. Uh, I spoke about some of the greatness of our country already. How do you know what this child has to offer? Why discourage her and cause her psychological problems for the rest of her life? where she'll never feel as if she's adequate. Why would you do that uh, when you ought to be encouraging, lifting people? That's not the job of leadership. Leadership lifts. Leadership finds what you can do. So any coach, male or female, in my view, they should immediately be thrown off the team. Plans announced for Bahamian Heritage Night with Jazz Chisholm and the Miami Marlins. Here's Marcellus Hall. Thanks a lot, Christina. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. It is opening day for Major League Baseball. And while our guy Jazz Chisholm with the Florida Marlins won't see action until tomorrow, nonetheless, the Bahamas Baseball Association announcing plans for the second version of the Heritage Night experience, which takes place in Miami. For more on that, let's take a look. 
Bombers Baseball Association today holding a press conference to launch the second annual Bahamian Heritage Night, which will be hosted by both them and the Miami Marlins, featuring Jazz Chisholm on June 25th of this year. On hand were representatives of the Bahamas Baseball Association as well as the Minister of Youth Sports and Cultural Culture, the Honorable Mario Boleg, who talked about the endeavor and what it means. To showcase who we are as a Bahamian, as a, be, as a people I should say, who are Bahamians, that we'll be able to showcase our cultural expression of junk canoe, uh, food and many other items and things that allow us to show who we are as a people. I am intend to be there live in color. Bahamas Baseball Association Secretary General Teddy Sweeting also talking about what's ahead. This has been a long time coming for the Bahamas Baseball Association. You know, we've talked about it for many, many years. And I made it uh, as a priority coming back onto the board. But we will not end this administration unless we have a Bahamas Baseball Association website, which illustrates, highlights everything and the accomplishment that baseball has been doing. And we wanted to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to go on the website, catch all of our news, all of our updates. And that is your look on sports here on this Thursday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you, Christina. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. Warm and sunny was the day. Our extended weather forecast is on the way. Plus, Comfort Suites wins the Traveler's Review Award. That's coming up when our news returns. Welcome back to our news. Possible showers tomorrow. Greg is back in the Weather Center with the latest. Thanks again, Christine, and a happy Thursday evening, everybody. In our second look at weather, we take a look at our satellite view. High pressure ridge still in charge of our weather pattern, slowly sliding out towards the east. That kept us very sunny and very hot today. Temperatures got up into the mid to upper 80s, and we're gonna see those temperatures stay warm tonight, should fall into the low 70s. But that high will continue to slide out towards the east. That's paving the way for a frontal boundary now across central Florida that's expected to get into the northwest Bahamas late tonight, early Friday morning, and then move through the capital by tomorrow afternoon and into the central Bahamas by tomorrow evening. Behind that, a nice change in the air mass will be with us for the weekend. We could see some temperatures into the upper 70s and low 80s, and our nighttime temperatures should dip into the 60s, but this is expected to be our last cold front for the season. Boating forecast for the Northwest Bahamas tonight through tomorrow. Your winds will be out of the southwest to west at 10 to 15 knots ahead of that front. Seas will be running two to four feet over the ocean. Your high tide will be at 6.56 this evening, and then across the central and southeast Bahamas, the southeast to suddenly flow at 10 to 15 knots. Your seas will be running two to four feet over open waters. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look now at your extended forecast through next Thursday. Maybe the last significant cold front for the season. Cooler temperatures expected by the weekend. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Greg. Comfort Suites Paradise Island has earned a top award from an international booking site. Booking.com recently bestowed the Paradise Island Hotel with the Traveler Review Award. Comfort Suites Paradise Island Director of Sales, Yasmin Mills-Strawn. 
This recognition from Booking.com, which is a premier travel booking site where users can go on and book our hotel with them and also enables them to leave reviews of their stay. So this award is a reflection of a high average score of a culmination of reviews on the actual Booking.com site. This is not the first time the popular All Suite property has won this particular award. It was also awarded the 2021 Traveler Review Award and the Guest Review Award of Excellence in 2014 and 2015. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Stay tuned for a brand new episode of On the Record with Jerome Sawyer, which starts right now.